also want to talk about uh, the pull token uh, for a little bit. And, you know, uh, what is the pull token? Like, it, it, it appears or it seems like it's like pretty well distributed within the pull together ecosystem, which is something that you need to account for as a user when you're looking at decentralized protocols is the token distribution. And so how do you feel like, like, how are you also successful in that distribution of the token? And what's some of the utility behind the token? And what does governance have uh, control over? Yeah. So on the first question, how did, you know, we were definitely very aggressive on wanting truly decentralized governance. And so, um, you know, when we did the initial airdrop, 15% of the total supply went to, um, went to the, the existing depositors in the protocol, which was more than went to even the investors in Pool Together Inc. or any of the employees of Pool Together Inc. So the greatest amount of pool tokens went to the users. And that was day one. And since then, even more have been distributed. So, so I guess like the short answer is we, did, you know, anyone can do that, but you know, you just have to sort of have less for yourself and, <laughs> and give more away, and you're able to accomplish the, those those goals. And we we sort of wanted to take that route from the beginning to make it, you know, really de really decentralized. Um, and also, we made the barriers to governance participation really low. So you only have to have ten thousand pool tokens to create a governance proposal, which is is um, 10 million is the total supply. So it's 0.1% of the total supply. So it's super, super low. Um, so you can, you can, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these protocols, it's like, Oh, there's no way a normal person could ever get that many tokens to be able to influence governance, but in pool together, a normal person certainly can. Um, so that's it. So in terms of what, what is the protocol or what do the pool token holders control? Um, I would say broadly, the primary things are, um, one we touched on is like yield generation or, or sorry, sorry, yield sources. So like what yield sources are approved by the protocol to be able to generate yield. Um, another is a big one is like the prize distribution. How often are prizes happening? How are they distributed? Again, there's a big design space there because you can have one $10,000 prize each week, or you can have 10, $100 or 10, $1,000 or, you know, whatever. You can have a lot of different prize distributions. So the prize distribution, the third is also, just the further distribution of the pool token itself. So the pool tokeners are in charge of the protocol treasury, which has a lot of pool tokens in it, as well as other assets. And so <clears throat> how those get distributed is up to the, the pool token holders. Um, there is a lot more coming with V5 in terms of making the pool token uh, more integral to the to the protocol sort of operations. Um, I won't get too much into it, but but there's basically the pool token holders will have a bigger role to play in sort of um, balancing these different prize pools that have the different yield sources to determine which ones are sort of the best ones to deposit into. I think I, I think I could do some pretty easy speculating on that type just, of utility. <laughs> you can do I some speculation, yeah. I won't say it. But, uh, and like, so all of that interest that's being generated by the pool depositors. So is all of that going to the users at the end of the, the day or the week, whatever the price period is, or is some of that actually retained by the pull together treasury? How does, because I think at one time there was like a, a small percentage that was going to the treasury. And I'm wondering like, is that still the case? So the way, yeah, uh, uh yes and no. So the, um, so no, no, as in right now, no, that's not the case. Yes, as in at, at certain points, it has been the case. So <clears throat> again, that's that's a pretty important job of the pool token holder governance is sort of managing the inflows and outflows um, in terms of like how much interest is being accrued, how many prizes are being distributed. And so at certain times, there's been less prizes distributed than interest coming in. And at other times, there's been more prizes distributed than interest coming in. And the token holder governance is basically managing that to sort of optimize it to, to have the best sort of um, the best sort of distribution to the depositors. And so at times when yield rates are really low, there's some subsidy, which like, again, this is the alpha podcast. So like right now, people who are depositing into pool together on Polygon are, are almost, are almost mathematically guaranteed to be getting a better APR than depositing into Aave directly. And that's because the pool together protocol itself is giving more yield to them than is the the Aave protocol is giving to the pool giving and so 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 but but on the flip side there 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 was there was a time maybe 
you know, I don't know a specific time, but maybe a year ago or whatever, where it was the opposite, where there's, you know, more yield coming in and, and then going out. So, um, so I guess I think that sort of answers your question. So it, it's sort of, it's sort of like the, the token holders do sort of control the inflow and outflow and try to try to balance that for optimum growth. Yeah, that makes sense. And I know that like during V3, there was like a, a reserve factor as well. Um, can you explain what that is? And is it, is it live in V4? Or do you think we'll see that in V5? Yeah. So the reserve factor was basically like setting an explicit rate to say like, okay, 10% of the yield will be kept in the protocol for future prizes. Um, and with V4, there is not a reserve factor, although conceptually the same thing sort of exists where there's not like an explicit rate that's set, but conceptually you can just sort of distribute 10% less prizes than yield comes in. And yeah, I, I do think like, again, continuing to manage this relationship because between yield generation and in prizes going out is, is going to be a really important job for the pool token holders with, with the, with the V5 as well. Um, because ultimately there is sort of this cold start problem with the protocol where I think to get to this, it needs to have really big prizes to get to the, to, to, to sort of break out and sort of become viral and sort of get to the place where your, your mom and your grandma are depositing. And so to have that, there's going to have to be a subsidy. You know, there's going to have to be some bootstrapping from the protocol to uh, to get to there. But then I think once it gets to this really large scale, um, that the, the subsidy will no longer will no longer be needed. 